this is the most special day of the year for, as you know, for yeah. people from New Hampshire coming down to Boston to see it shattered is just amazing. What I would emphasize to people is this is Boylston Street, very commercial, a Prudential Tower, lots of shops. And then right below, right below the finish line, some of the great heritage of Boston, Boston Commons and some of the churches. One street over is Commonwealth Avenue, which is that famous tourist avenue, the gorgeous houses. So this is the very soul of the city off of Beacon Street. You can see that wonderful map there uh, indicating Copley Square and such. This is the historic district, one uh, street right over, Trinity two streets Church, over before Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the very heart and soul of the city on this most wonderful day, a perfect day for the marathon. Uh, I watched some of the, I, did, I, did I tell you I cheated? I watched Red Sox baseball while on the job at work. I hope that was okay. That's okay. It the Red Sox. That happens. It does, it does happen. <laughs> that's happens. But that's Patriots Day here. And uh, uh, this has just been shattering. Uh, a close family member was just two blocks away when this happened. And uh, we're still making phone calls. Everybody so far is fine. But you see this tragedy. And, of course, well, we'll again, hear from the police you know, soon. It, it, I've been there on many marathon days. I'm sure you have as well. It is, as you pointed out, one of the happiest days of the year in Boston. People are very excited. There's a very uh, very warm uh, a warmth in the city that, by the way, you don't always get in a northeastern town. But on this one particular day, um, everybody's in a very good mood, lots of smiles. 29,000 people from around the globe come to run in this event every year from 90 different countries. It's an event that's been going on since 1897, very much part of the Boston tradition and one that people really want to be part of. You have 500,000 people that come to Boston uh, or in Boston for this event. So, you know, as we think about this and whether or not this was a terror attack, uh, as Richard Falkenrath has been telling us in, in his belief, likely uh, that, how, how that might in be? fact be the issue. How could it not be? I know because yeah, I mean, you've got two the and definition then of what we've seen so two far. Additional bombs four that four were devices is what we know. Mm -hmm. Two that went off and, and we're told uh, two others, Richard, that uh, the police department is trying to address right now. A total of yeah, four. If all the information that we you, you just recited is accurate, uh, then then it, it certainly is a terrorist attack. <clears throat> it had all the hallmarks to begin with. Uh, I've been in around enough of these incidents to know that at the beginning you were careful uh, and first reports are often incorrect and you want to be careful before leaping to conclusions. But as more information comes in, as the mosaic begins to take form and take place, then you can reach a conclusion. And what I think I expect now what we've just heard that once uh, Mayor Menino comes on uh, in front of the national audience and talks to them, he'll have to label it terrorism. Yeah. And, and when you look at this, Trish, I think it's so important to understand when this occurred. This is 3 p.m. This is the best, the glow of the day. Uh, people have come from Hopkinton. They've gone through the uh, outer suburbs, of course, with the romance of colonial times. They go down uh, Route 16, which is Washington Street in Wellesley, uh, right where I used to work. And then down they go into Newton, into the city, up that horrific hill. And you know, you, AKA you know, the wall, Tom. yeah, but you know, as I've seen, the first 200 people, it's like they're not even sweating. They're like you would if you were if you were running the marathon. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tom. You, I don't know you, about you, that. You wouldn't be that. sweating. But this is 3 p.m. and this is that glow. I've accomplished it. Exhausted people and frankly tired support staff, mm -hmm. which makes it even more tragic than here in the 3 p.m. Again, of a just a perfect day for this marriage. And and speak, Tom, to the the sort of spirit of the city. You know, here we have what appears to be a terrorist attack. Two bombs that go off. Two others discovered, and yet uh, no sense of panic. But instead, uh, people in Boston helping each other out. As we looked at the footage, nobody running, but somehow. Everybody helping. Speak if you can to the viewers who aren't as familiar with Boston as you, as to. I, uh, I'm looking what at these images says. now, Adam, and they look like the movies, except this isn't the movies. Uh, you know, Dr. Falkenrath can talk about this, but there's a whole issue of. Hollywoodization of Boston, and I, I don't remember the movie, but I remember literally them shooting a movie at Copley Place with the usual blow em ups like you'd have in New York or a lot of the other major cities, except this isn't Hollywood. Right. This is for real, and these people are trained to do this.